Hello and welcome to this week's caregiver question of the week. This week we're going to be answering a really, really great question about exercise and Parkinson's disease. The question is whether or not exercise helps people with Parkinson's disease. And trust me, the answer is so much cooler than you think it's going to be. It is actually, this is really, really fascinating stuff. So I'm excited to answer this excellent question this week. First, my name's Amelia. I'm an occupational therapist. I'm also the owner and founder of Higher Standards Caregiver Training and the very proud co-founder of WCN University. That's Full Care Network University for family caregivers. Um, and this, y'all, is for educational purposes only. It's not a substitute for health or medical advice. It's not a substitute for a therapeutic relationship. So if you need to be seen by a licensed healthcare provider, then please make sure you are reaching out to your provider to get your individual uh, assessment and treatment as this is for education only. A um, couple of quick reminders before we get started here too. Next week's caregiver question of the week is going to be a special edition. It's gonna be next Thursday, that's June 8th at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And we're gonna be talking with Dr. Brittany Lamb about the most common questions and con concerns that she hears about advanced directives. This is really, really essential information. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter whether or not you're taking care of someone. It doesn't matter whether you're sick or you ran a marathon last week. The fact is we all need to have this information about advanced directives. It is so, so important to not be making decisions in times of crisis, which we almost never expect. Um, so make sure you're following Dr. Brittany Lamb. Make sure that you are following me to get notifications about that event and when we are going live. Um, uh, join us live if you can so that you can maybe pop your own question into the mix to ask. Um, and get answered by Dr. Brittany Lamb. She is a treasure trove of information, guys. I mean, really, really, really good stuff on so many important topics, but definitely this one on advanced directives. If you can't watch it live, of course, there will be a recording uh, that we will, that I'll go ahead and post afterwards uh, on all of my social media. So make sure you are following me again to see that posting because like I said, it doesn't matter who you are. doesn't matter what you do. doesn't matter your age, your race, your demographics, whatever, this is information we all need to know um, so that we have, so that we get what we want, we get what we need, and we're not having to make decisions or our family's not having to make decisions in times of crisis. So please make sure you watch that live event um, or check out the recording afterwards. Um, second quick announcement, next Thursday, again, that's June 8th, this time at 2 p.m. Central, uh, Shay Domain, she's a fabulous physician assistant, and I are gonna be talking about the most, the kind of the best, most actionable evidence-based fall prevention methods out there. Um, Shay's going to be doing a great talk about medications, and I'm going to be sharing some other fall prevention methods that are highly effective, highly actionable, that probably you did not know about. So I will drop a link in to get registered for that along with this video um, as well. So check that out if that is something that would be helpful and relevant to you. Um, okay. Let's answer this question about Parkinson's disease and exercise. And does exercise help Parkinson's disease? And the answer is yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, oh, sorry, I got popular there for a second. Um, yes, absolutely. It does help, uh, exercise does help Parkinson's disease, but it helps in way more ways than we think. So, of course, the, the benefit that we can probably all kind of Put our finger on that we can name right away is that when someone with Parkinson's disease exercises regularly, um, they are going to maintain their level of fitness. They're going to maintain their level of functionality, and that is going to help them be stronger, more functional, safer, and more independent for longer. Um, and that, of course, is essential. But there are a couple of other effects that you may not have been aware of that I want to talk about too. So one, this is very, very cool. Um, did you know that exercise with Parkinson's disease can actually be neuroprotective? That's right. It can. Act, there is evidence suggesting that it can actually protect neurons that are susceptible to the disease process from Parkinson's disease. So it can actually protect the brain from the disease um, and the progression of the disease. Um, another great thing that exercise does for all of us is it helps to increase our neuroplasticity. And that's probably a, a word that you have heard at this point. It's pretty 
it's pretty, uh, it's been common in the world of medicine and rehab for a long time, but it's also a pretty well-known kind of buzzword at this point. And what it means is neuroplasticity is simply the brain's ability to adapt and change over time based on the demands that are being placed on it. When we exercise, our brains are better at that. Our brains actually get better at adapting. They have more neuroplasticity. And this is incredibly important for folks with Parkinson's disease because it allows them to continue, it allows their brain to function better and continue to adapt and, and have more functionality and independence um, uh, throughout the disease process. So those are three really, really important things about exercise in Parkinson's disease. Now, here's a couple of things to know about that though. First of all, in order to have those benefits, what we know is that exercise actually needs to be intense. It's gotta be pretty intense. It's gotta be challenging exercise in order for someone to actually get those benefits uh, when they have Parkinson's disease. The other thing to know about that is that that doesn't mean that uh, if you have Parkinson's disease, go out and exercise super intensely right now because there are reasons that that might not be safe for everyone to do. A um, handful of, ex of examples. Uh, if someone has congestive heart failure, if someone has COPD, if someone has MS, if someone has even long COVID, then intense exercise may not necessarily actually be safe for everyone to do. So point being, these issues are actually more complicated than we would like them to be. It's really important. If, you, um, if you're starting an exercise program, please make sure that you are talking with a healthcare provider to make sure that the level of exercise that you're going to take on is actually safe for you to do. And two, especially if you've got Parkinson's disease, if you know someone with Parkinson's disease and you're like, wow, I, I'm interested in this. This sounds great. I want to take on intense exercise. This is a really great opportunity to talk with your doctor, get a referral for physical therapy or occupational therapy, and let them help you design what is going to be a safe intensive exercise program for you. So you can get the benefits of this without um, without taking on additional risks because there's always balancing acts that go on um, when we're helping people design these programs and, and get the best effect that they possibly can from it. So um, those are kind of the two big things to know. One is that it does have to be an intense level of exercise. And two is that um, that level of exercise also needs to be safe. And so that is an individualized program. You do need to speak with uh, a licensed healthcare provider. Ideally, it's going to be a physical or an occupational therapist to help you get that sorted out. Um, one more quick note about exercise. I know this is going a little long, but I just think that it's so important to state that exercise absolutely has huge benefits, not just for people with Parkinson's disease, but for everyone. And it's not just about those physical benefits. The, the cognitive benefits the mental health benefits that we know are associated with exercise. And there's no question about this. There's a ton of research showing that exercise is great for mental health, that it is great for cognitive functioning and focus, um, in addition to all of the other benefits that we are aware of when it comes to things like strength, balance, et cetera. So, um, you know, go exercise. That's not a, that wasn't, that wasn't a direction. I'm not saying go exercise. I'm just saying like, go exercise. Yay. Um, but also please do make sure and talk with a licensed health care provider about what is a safe level of exercise for you. Okay. <laughs> that is this week's caregiver question of the week. Thank you so much for watching. Please do make sure to join for next week's live caregiver question of the week with Dr. Brittany Lamb, where she is going to be talking about advanced directives. It's going to be a really, really good one. Like I said, so important for everyone. Until then, guys, next time. Oh, and if you need that fall prevention info, please make sure to get registered for uh, Shay and I's fall prevention for family caregivers event. Um, until next time, please, guys, stay healthy, stay well, and most of all, take care. Bye.